This is a talk was prepared jointly by me and Andrew Burgess, in the sense that Andrew did the work and I'm giving the talk. Um, Andrew um, can't be with us for various reasons this week. Um, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to report back on extend on the state of GDB upstream, and I'm going to say a little bit about bare metal multi-core debugging, and that'll feed into um, a couple of the later talks. So where does GDB sit in the RISC-V world? What does it need to worry about? You might think it needs to worry about the debug specification task group. Actually, that's not really a big issue, because GDB is sitting at a level of abstraction above the actual realities of how debugs implemented. So long as it can read and write registers and memory and start and stop programs, GDB is happy. It does depend on the ABI, so the technical committee and the exact specification of the ISA are important. And so for the ABI, it depends on the software tool chain, because we do need to know how to unwind the stack, where to find things in registers, and so forth. And following on from this morning, of course, any particular implementation of GDB is going to be talking to something that's a platform, and some aspects of GDB will be affected by the work of the platform task group. So where are we? Um, the upstream commit was actually dated the 6th of March, and it provides the basic bare metal support. So if you're doing uh, debug of a bare metal embedded system, that's all there upstream. Um, Andrew Burgess saw it through to commit, but he builds on work from uh, Tim Newsom, Albertu, and Darius Rad. Uh, upstream, the official maintainers are Andrew and Palmer. And GDB is tested nightly on the main architectures. We test it internally against uh, GDB Sim uh, as the built-in GDB simulator and also against a remote GDB server, but that's done by wrapping the GDB simulator, so it's exactly the same target, and we try it with everything from a small RV32IM through to a pretty large um, RV64 with floating point. And across all those architectures, we've got a better than 99% uh, pass rate. Now, that's, um, those are, I don't expect to take the figures in, but those are the results for some of the architectures using the built-in simulator. Um, it may seem a bit surprising if you're used to GCC regression to see so many failures. GDB, it's quite common for architectures to have um, quite high failure numbers. It's really quite hard to get all the corner cases known, and indeed GDB has the concept of known, pass, known failures which are things we know are wrong and no one knows how to fix and they're there, they're tested for just so we one day might get round to it. And for the GDB server, similar pattern, um, slightly lower figures just because there are some GDB regression tests that are marked as don't run me if I'm a remote server. Um, of the tests that are failing, there's a mixture of things there. Um, some of those are bugs in GDB, some of those are bugs in the GDB tests, which RISC-V has exposed, and that would benefit everyone to fix them. And we have got some issues where we need to sort out how GDB understands some aspects of the ABI. Um, in particular, the way um, GCC for RISC-V uses the link register as a last minute scratch register just before a call uh, causes confusion. Um, and there are some issues with GCC not generating perfect dwarf debug information. Um, so what do we got to do next? Um, one of the first things we want to put in there is put XML target description support. That's where when you fire up GDB and connect to a target, you get it to tell you about its properties, how many registers it's got, how wide they are, anything else. Now, open OCD, um, Tim Newsom's work supports that, um, but um, it wasn't complete, and when we upstreamed, we took it out because you can't have sort of part work lying around in the upstream. But we want to put that back in, and that's our first priority because it'll make it, you know, it'll stop the stupid thing where you tell, tell the client you've got one flavor of RISC-V and you've got a target, it's a different one. Um, 
we want to add memory map support so you can tell the GDB, the target can report back where it's got ROM, where it's got RAM, where it's got flash, and GDB understands you can't try and write a soft bait point into ROM. Um, for embedded targets, we want to add remote I.O. support. Um, typically, if you've got a little chip that's controlling your refrigerator, it's not going to have a screen for you to do printf. But for debugging, you can re route the printf through to the GDB client and print it out in the console. And that's really helpful for debug and, in, uh, and testing. And finally, not everyone turns on dwarf debugging when they're building something or they don't have all the binary with dwarf debugging. Um, we need to add the um, uh, remote, the stack unwinding when you don't have dwarf information. And that's about a disassembling and detective work on what you think is going on on the stack. We also need to actually upstream a GDB simulator. We've been using the one from the RISC-V repository, but that could possibly go upstream. If you see my colleague Mary Bennett's talk later, she'll talk about a CGEN-based simulator. That's a tool widely used across the GCC world. We could upstream that. We could upstream them both. But it would be nice to actually have an upstream ISS. And lastly, uh, Linux application debugging. This is a bare metal. And the only reason the priorities are that way around is that our customers are more focused on the bare metal at the moment. Um, um, so what I want to say in the last few minutes is just a little bit about GDB's view of multi-core. Now, historically, GDB has the concept of parallelism that looks very Linux-like. GDB talks to what it calls inferiors. That's the thing you're debugging. And historically, you could have lots of inferiors, but you could only be debugging one at a time. Um, only one would be active. And there was a sort of bit of extra stuff that GDB understood about fork, and if you had a Linux process fork, it gave you the option of following the, the parent or the child. And it knew about processes, which had an address space, and threads within processes that shared address spaces. And it has a concept of, has a concept of flow of control of either I hit a breakpoint and all the threads stop, or I hit a breakpoint and just the thread with the breakpoint stops. And that then leads to a requirement for asynchronous um, uh, operation of, of GDB. There's been a lot of work, and this is generic, this is not RISC-V stuff, to try and get a completely generic view of parallelism from a debug perspective, where these could be threads, they could be processes, they could be cores, or in RISC-V speak, they could be hearts. Um, and where you can have multiple active inferiors all being controlled at once. Each inferior has a flow of control. Each inferior is associated with an address space, which tells it what memory it can see, and with a memory map, whether it can read it or write it. And that deals with architectures where individual cores have got their own bit of private memory and also shared memory, which just doesn't fit in a, a Linux model. And also, and this is the important one, each inferior is associated with a program space. In other words, a symbol table and dwarf debugging information for the code that is running on that inferior. And that means you can do things like, say, set a breakpoint on a function foo, and it will set it at the right location on all the different cores which have foo symbol on their program space. And then when you run this program, all the inferiors run at once. And again, you can have the concept of all stop and non-stop. Do you stop all the inferiors when you hit a breakpoint, or just some, or just the ones in the particular program space? Um, and there are corner cases you have to deal with if you're running a lot of parallel cores, all in synchronous. They all hit the same breakpoint on the same function at the same time. You get the first one of those. When you've dealt it, you probably want to say, and release all the other breakpoints. I'm no longer interested in them. I just wanted to get the first one at this location. So that's where we're going to. A lot of that is upstream. GD, it supports multiple concurrent inferiors. It works for native Linux, and it works for a single remote target. We're trying to move that work for particularly Pedro Alves, where you can have multiple remote targets. So you can have several connections going to different things, but they all form part of the same platform. Okay. GDB for RISC-V has that functionality as far as it is upstream. We've tested it with a 36-core uh, RV64 bare metal system. We're working on a public ver version based on a bare metal pulp system. Um, 
more work is still needed to really sort out how you deal with complex address spaces. So this is work in process, progress. We're actively working on that. And we are very fortunate in having customers who are very clear they want this stuff upstream. Thank you. I'll take any questions.